Hello, Facebook. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Uh, we're here with Krista Sevens, who is the Associate Dean of Nursing. And uh, we're here today to talk about our accelerated nursing program. So thank you, Dr. Steffens, for joining us today, joining us from a lab. Yeah, this is one of our simulation labs, actually, over in um, uh, where our labs uh, for skills and uh, one of the three simulations. This young lady behind me is uh, Victoria. She's a birthing simulator. That's fantastic. Well, I'm really excited to, to talk about the accelerated nursing program. Um, before we get in, those listening and those that will join later know, um, next Thursday, April 14th, we'll be live at 2 o'clock p.m. Central. Uh, we'll be joined by Dr. Nancy Kurtz, who is our provost at Mercy College. We're going to talk about all things nursing. Um, so be on the lookout. Uh, we've got some more Facebook Lives coming. Uh, we're going to be uh, doing a town hall with our uh, paramedic program and a few um, and, uh, and a fire chief who has had uh, paramedic students at their firehouse in another location in Iowa. So we really have a lot to talk about. A lot is happening right but today is about the accelerated nursing program. So Dr. Steffens, um, let's just start with what is an accelerated nursing program? Sure, Andy. So an accelerated nursing program, a shortened or condensed version, all of the same content, all of the same coursework that's required by the Iowa Board of Nursing for pre-licensure uh, nursing programs, but it is as the hence the name time frame. And so what would take someone normally two years, two years and seven months uh, for a traditional BSN takes us 12 months um, here. So you can get everything three semesters versus eight. That sounds, uh, that sounds like a lot and pretty rigorous. It's intense, it is intense, but it's a good program. Students enjoy it. Start there. Um, what, you know, talk about what kind of students are attracted to an accelerated nursing program. Um, we, by our count and admissions, we think that we've had about students from 30 states maybe that have come to our program. So they're coming from all over, but what kind of students join our program? Sure. So accelerated BSN students are, are typically what we call non-traditional. Uh, high school into uh, the college environment. These uh, folks are second career students or uh, those that already have a previous bachelor's degree. And so are focused on, um, oftentimes they come to us with um, existing familial or professional obligations. And so that's what's nice about our program being that it's accelerated is that it's built for I remember in uh, in a, a campus meeting, you were describing specifically a few of the different backgrounds that some students had, um, and I, if you could share that with uh, with our group today, yeah. it, it was really a dynamic field. Dynamic is a good word. Yes, we have we have a wide variety of students. Um, one that can come to my mind always um, is we had a concert violinist. Wonderful experience as a family member was uh, was passing away, and so that called her to to the nursing profession. We have had military police. We have a microbiology professor who is that's exciting, lecturing to him. Um, but uh, we've got um, let's see, military police, uh, violinist, uh, microbiology professor. Um, gosh, we have. scientist, technician, um, it's just really anything under the sun. You would, you would not, I mean, you would be surprised with the, the breadth of, of student backgrounds that we have. So I'm a lot of diverse backgrounds. Um, you know, really it's making the commitment to do it for 12 months. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure people that are watching are wondering, well, okay, so tell me what a week looks like. Like what it's accelerated, but what does a week look like? Uh, maybe a week, a term. Um, what does what kind of the student life look like as an accelerated nursing student? Sure. So with the exception of the 
where you have your labs, okay? So typically we try to schedule almost all of our courses, the synchronous online courses, so you're participating in a live lecture. Um, we try to schedule all long day on Tuesday, but what you're able to do is, you know, uh, group those uh, lecture experiences. So you've got um, the rest of the week, typically Wednesday, Thursday, and so we're able to create uh, consistent schedules over the life of the program for students so that they're able to plan life around, around school. So, Starting the accelerated program, um, you know, making either a career transition or just taking that, that step into nursing, what does the first semester look like, you know, in terms of, you know, classes people are taking? It's a cohort-based program, so you're also in that first semester. You're kind of you're getting to know the people that you're going to be around yes. for the next year. Yes. So first semester is um, has a little more goes. Um, what we have is your initial course in health assessment, which comes with a lab, and so you'll have a didactic portion or lecture, and then you'll also practice your health assessment skills within a fundamentals course. And so that, as again, hence the name, is where we uh, go through all of the basic or foundational skills necessary for nursing practice. That also has a didactic portion as well as a lab. And so you're able to um, continuously from the first term into the second apply those skills that you've gotten from the, uh, the lab experiences um, in real life on fellow students before we dive into the clinical setting. So I know that you started teaching in, in the program before you became the associate dean, um, but you know when we say that you know hey it's really diverse in, in our student you know our student makeup from where people come from to what they're doing before they they come to the program you know we really have a diverse faculty too um, in terms of experiences and things people have done so what would students be able to expect from the faculty that they um, would would be learning from, you know, their, their backgrounds, classroom experiences. Yeah. So we've got a faculty that, and again, I just added this up and I can't recall exactly the number, but I believe it's over 120 years of nursing experience. And so we've got, um, again, a really wide array of backgrounds within that, as well as education experience. We have forensic nurses, we have correctional nurses, we have um, med surge, OB, pediatrics, um, dialysis. I, I mean, the list goes on. We really have a sampling of, um, you know, from pretty much every specialty that one can, you know, um, come across pretty commonly. So, um, what is helpful about that is because as you progress through your program, you're going to, if you don't already have an idea, oh, I wanna be XYZ type nurse, you're gonna come into that clinical rotation and you're either gonna decide, yes, that is definitely what I wanna do or no, it's not, right? So um, what we're able to do then with this uh, variety of experiences and backgrounds uh, from our faculty is kind of create a little, uh, like a tailored, almost like a mentorship. So you're able to discuss, hey, I would love to be a forensic nurse. Well, you can come and talk to me as it's in my background and we can discuss the scope of practice for a forensic nurse and where you would work. What is the type of um, what was a typical day for a forensic nurse and so forth and so on. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's very handy uh, for students to kind of have those subject matter experts in all of those specialties. So I, I know that you're in a simulation lab right now um, and we have a lot more simulation uh, right around where you're at. Uh, can you, can you describe the simulation experience that our students have um, you know, both with low fidelity and high fidelity um, patients? Yeah, so uh, we have um, all the way from static mannequins, which would kind of be our lower fidelity, um, manne mannequins without the bells and whistles, essentially. Um, they are movable by uh, students, right? They don't, they don't do anything on their own. All the way up to high fidelity simulators where um, we're simulating vital signs, uh, any number of conditions, um, acute, and chronic, um, where students are able to interact with the mannequins and do so in a safe place where 
the mannequin can get hurt and it's okay, right? We're able to practice and make mistakes in a sim lab and that's the whole point of that. So we do have a fair amount of simulation in our program um, and we do try and uh, supplement the didactic content in some of those specialty areas where it might be a little bit more difficult to, you know, plan an OB clinical experience where every student gets to watch a birth. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, right? So what we're able to do then is use uh, Victoria here behind us to simulate births of uh, varying acuities. So students are able to dip their toe in the water, you know, of those specialties before they uh, were to, um, to start into that area of practice if that's something they desire. Well, if our listeners didn't know that we have an affiliation with Mercy One Hospital, yes, it's right across my... the street, now they know that the ambulance <laughs> is on the way, business. right? So uh, we, you know, this is, this really is a transfer program. So students are coming to it either with 68 uh, transferable semester hours or an earned bachelor degree. Um, so they've, they've experienced college before and, you know, they're probably familiar with professor office hours. Um, in the hands-on simulation sense, we offer, I, I, I think I saw last on the calendar, it was four days a week of open simulation hours or open open lab Open hours. labs, open sim, yep. So we do, we try to accommodate our students again because we know that, um, you know, accelerated students typically come with, you know, they're either working or have families, uh, jobs, full or part-time. And so what we try to do is um, provide just a wide array of times for, for the students to be able to come in and practice in the lab or schedule a simulation. Um, we have two faculty that are kind of our simulation experts and um, they're amazing. And some of the scenarios that they create, you would just you wouldn't believe. Um, it, they're fantastic. So uh, we try to give our students um, as many opportunities as possible uh, to experience those things. And as far, you know, Andy, when you mentioned office hours, um, most of our professors, uh, again, completely understand that these are not traditional students. And so we don't work traditional hours, right? We're available um, into the evening, uh, some on the weekends. I can't I don't want all the uh, faculty to hear me say that they have to work on the weekends, but nonetheless, so we do, um, we do answer on the weekends. And so we, we are aware that we have to, you know, interact with the students when they're available. And so all of our faculty are, are happy to, to be non-traditional in those office hours. sense. so. That's great. And, um, you know, I think it's important to touch on uh, something you just mentioned, Dr. Steffens working within this program, it's accelerated, it's really intense. Um, I know that Mercy One, uh, within the last year, created a position called the Student Nurse Tech. Um, so that's a, a popular position with some of our students where they can do PRN work. So it's kind of on their time. It's a really flexible schedule. Yes. Um, you know, what do you hear from students in terms of the program, working in different positions? So, you know, I would say that the student nurse tech position is really growing in popularity. And what that is, is basically it allows um, people in that position a, a little bit of a wider scope where, um, you know, the, the nurses on the floor are aware that they're a student nurse. And so they seek out opportunities for the techs to participate in things that uh, a tech normally wouldn't participate in, right? So um, it's basically like a beacon uh, for the rest of the nursing staff to come and pull you into things that um, you may not get to see otherwise. And so um, all of the nurses are, are great about doing that, trying to facilitate um, extra experiences outside of the clinical hours that we normally have. So on, on clinical hours, we talked about um, uh, lecture, the uh, synchronous online lecture on Tuesdays. When are, when are lab and clinical days? Okay, so lab is only in the first semester, okay, so terms one and two, and then uh, clinicals can be on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Occasionally, there may be a Monday thrown in there, um, but really, we, we ask the students to reserve all other days aside from Friday and Saturday, or excuse me, Saturday and Sunday, of course, uh, for clinicals, but um, typically, there are no more than two clinical days 
per week. So you wouldn't be rotating on any um, floors uh, more than two. So you like a med surge and potentially a specialty like mental health or peds and OB. Perfect. Well, um, I think we should get into, you know, what does it take to get into the program uh, on the admission side? So, you know, as I mentioned, students need to have 68 trans, uh, transferable credits or an earned bachelor degree. So we, um, we open our program fall, spring, and summer. Um, for, for each of those starts, we do have a priority deadline. Um, so our priority deadline for this fall was April 1st, uh, but we have just announced that we're going to extend that to May 15 uh, to give as many people as possible an opportunity to begin our program this fall. So um, our priority deadline looks at candidates who um, have applied and they're in process of completing the requirements for the program. The program does have eight prerequisite courses. Those prerequisite courses uh, are an anatomy, human anatomy with a lab, human physiology with a lab, microbiology with a lab, English composition one, general psychology, uh, college level math, a statistics course, and a nutrition course. In those eight prerequisites, students have to have an uh, extracted GPA of 3.0 or better. So sometimes there's a misconception that students have to have all of their prerequisites done before they can apply. That is not true. You can apply. Um, you know, we recommend you apply when you're closer to finishing the prerequisite courses, uh, but you can apply while you're in progress. Our application is free. Uh, once you fill out the application and you send in your transcripts, we will give a, a free credit evaluation to let you know exactly where you're at. Um, your transcript moves to our program coordinator who reviews your prerequisite courses and then communicates with you. You either met all eight prerequisite courses with a 3.0 or higher, or here's exactly where you're at. You have to take you know, these two final courses or these three final courses. Um, you can come to the college and take them with us. And then we just track your progress uh, towards when you're starting. So um, if you have applied for a particular semester and for whatever reason that semester doesn't work out, it's no problem. We can move you to the next semester. Uh, we we uh, have about 200 students per year that join our program. So um, it is a, it's a fairly large program. Um, and uh, I would say that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we, we think we've tracked about 30 states of having applicants. Um, so, you know, people really are coming from all over. And when I talk to students about the accelerated program, that's something that I really promote because I think that the um, just diversity of applicants really makes the, you know, the cohorts really interesting. So I don't, you know, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Dr. Stephens, you know, teaching in the program and <clears throat> kind of meeting people from all over and seeing different yeah. backgrounds. It is, it is great. We, we, again, we have a really diverse student background. Um, you know, it always, you know, I, I, I'm always surprised when I think about just the breadth of experiences we have, but you did mention Andy that we are tracking from 30 states. And so a lot of students think, you know, Hey, if I come and do this program, do I have to practice nursing in Iowa? No, you don't. That's the nice thing. Well, one of the many nice things, right, about being a registered nurse is that the um, the licensure exam is national, right? So it doesn't really matter necessarily where you take the uh, the NCLEX, the National Council Licensure Exam, um, for registered nurses. It it matters where you establish residency before you apply for a license. Okay, so um, and let's also remember too that there's the nurse licensure compact where there. There are several states where I can use my license as in Iowa, I can go to Nebraska with no problem and have to apply to their board of nursing. And so um, there are a few states that are, are in the process or still not part of the nurse licensure compact, um, Washington, Oregon, um, a few others. But um, but it, it, it is something that you know students come here from far and wide to, to do the program. Um, and then they're able to go back to their, you know, their home state of residence to practice as a nurse. That's perfect. <clears throat> and, you know, a few things that, um, because 
because students that are, we find students that are applying for the accelerator program sometimes have applied to um, a few other programs. Uh, our program does not require that you have to be a CNA beforehand. Um, we, we do require students to uh, purchase a Castle Branch account, which um, houses all of your vaccinations. Uh, we do require the COVID-19 vaccination um, uh, or an approved waiver. The tuition for the program is a tuition and fees is about $39,000, doesn't include textbooks, scrubs, and equipment. Um, but uh, we feel it's, uh, it's really competitive um, within uh, accelerated programs. And there's <clears throat> one last thing that I want to touch on, which I hope doesn't get buried in this. Uh, this has been you know, a really great conversation. Uh, I think people will really learn a lot about what an accelerated program is, how it operates at Mercy College of Health Sciences. Um, so we have an affiliation with Mercy One of Central Iowa. And right now, Mercy One is offering graduates of Mercy College of Health Sciences uh, nurses up to $50,000 of tuition reimbursement. You know, what, you have to hear that from students, you know, what, what a significant um, yes. impact that's gonna have on, you know, just the burden of, of potentially leaving school with debt. It is, and, and on top of that, you know, of course we would love you to come and work at Mercy One. However, if you, you know, decide that you wanna go back home to a different state, there are many federal programs as well. Um, one that is pretty popular right now is the uh, Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. After you make X amount of payments towards a loan, um, nurses in eligible communities or organizations um, are able to have the rest of their loans forgiven. Um, I believe the Nurse Corps is another federal program right now, um, but there, there are many. Um, and so it really is a great time um, to be a nurse, right? We've got a lot going on that um, isn't typical. And so there are many, many um, opportunities for unique experiences to be had as of late. <laughs> so. And talking about unique experiences, you know, we, in the fall of, of 2022, we will offer our second cohort in Iowa City. We will, yes. So for those folks at the other end of the state, right, um, we have a small kind of satellite cohort. Um, currently, there are 15 students in, um, in the cohort, and their lab and classes uh, for the first semester are out of Mercy One in Iowa City. We have a really neat lab space there with all the bells and whistles that we have here, simulators, um, all of the lab equipment. And so that's kind of their home base uh, for the students in the Iowa City cohort. They participate in clinicals, of course, at Mercy One in Iowa City, um, but also at um, St. Luke's Cedar Rapids. Um, we've had some students that are um, doing preceptorships at at other area hospitals as well. So it's a it's a, a really neat opportunity to experience, you know, the mission, vision, and values of Mercy College in Des Moines at the eastern end of uh, of the state. So that's great. And you know, even even to take that a step further with the amount of out of state applicants that we get that some of them go back to their home state, um, just the impact that Mercy College of Health Sciences had is now having, you know, really nationally, um, uh, really, it really encompasses the, the mission of the college, um, the mission of the, the, the sisters, you know, years ago um, to make an impact on, uh, on healthcare in the United States. So we, you know, we've been able to, to harness that in central Iowa for a long time. Um, and now we're really making a national imprint. Uh, imprint. So um, that's really fantastic. Well, Dr. Steffens, do you have any final thoughts? I don't, we covered a lot. Um, again, I, I think um, the one thing I would say is that, you know, nursing, you can write your ticket anywhere right now. Um, so you don't have to um, be any, you know, if you, if you are called to the nursing profession and try an area that you don't like, that's absolutely okay. You can, <laughs> there are so many other avenues for you to pursue. And so I cannot think of another profession with so many, uh, you know, diverse opportunities uh, for practice. So um, I, I personally think we can't go wrong with nursing, but I might be a little biased. 
Well, thank you for joining us today. Again, today was all about our accelerated Bachelor of Science in Nursing at Mercy College of Health Sciences. Uh, for those, those following, friends, uh, staff, faculty, alumni, just the followers of Mercy College of Health Science on Facebook, thank you for joining. Um, again, Dr. Chris Steffens, Associate Dean of Nursing at Mercy College of Health Sciences. Thank you again for joining. Um, the last thing I'm gonna plug is our priority deadline has been extended to May 15th. You can apply at mchs.edu slash apply. Our application is free and we're waiting to help. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, I hope the last, uh, the last bit's really been helpful for really learning more about our accelerated BSN uh, program. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next Thursday, April 14th at 2 p.m. with Provost Dr. Nancy Kurtz. We're going to talk all things nursing at Mercy College. Have a great rest of your day.